Hi, and welcome back to the Java Tutorial Podcast. In this example, I'll be demonstrating how you can use an array of objects. Uh, you can read data from a file into that array, and then you can interact with that array through a GUI that has buttons and text fields and so forth. So in this example, I'll be using the student record and the file reading example that we looked at in class. So um, the student record has a constructor that's passed a line of data, and I'll talk about that a little bit more here in, here in a minute. And we have methods get name, one called quiz average that gets the average of all the students' quizzes, best quiz that returns their highest quiz score, and then a two string that just returns their the, the status of the object. So if we look here at our student record, Here's the, the constructor, and this is a little bit different than the other constructors that we've looked at um, to date. Instead of being passed each individual data item, it's passed a string. So we'll see here that we're getting um, Mary Smith, and all of her quiz scores are being passed in as a string object. And then inside the, um, inside the constructor, we take that string and use a scanner to scan in the first name, the last name, um, instantiate an, the uh, correct number of quizzes. In this case, you'll see up here that it's six. And then loop over the remainder of the string to store each of those quiz scores in our quiz array. And so basically what happens here, if I say student record, a student equals new student record, pass it the string Mary Smith and her six quiz scores, I get a reference to an object, and that object has first, last, and quiz data, instance data, and um, the values um, Mary and Smith, and then that array of quiz scores. So in our uh, file reading example, what we did is we um, read data from this file called quizdata.txt, and in my example here I've just got three student records, but we can have many more. And the idea here is that we want to read in from this file how many students there are in the file. What it, so you'll notice here what it's doing is it declares an array of students, and at that point we don't know how many there are. It's just a reference to a, a student array that doesn't exist yet. This next line here is instantiating the array of student record references. So then we have an array of, in this case, three student record references. And, um, but we don't have any student records yet. And then in this while loop, for each line of input in the file, for example, Logan Howard and all of his quiz scores, Victoria Long, all of her quiz scores, and so forth, for each of those, it's going to instantiate a new student record with that data. Next one and next one until it reaches the end of the file. So what we want to do is basically add a GUI front end to this, to this array of student records so that the user can interact with the uh, array and get, um, get data from that array. So this is what our GUI will look like. It's got a, what's called a text area up here at the top. We haven't used one of those before. And then it's got a text field and two buttons. And the idea is if the user types in a student's name in the uh, text field and hits enter, we're just essentially going to get all of that student's data, their name and their quiz scores. If the user presses on the best button for a student, we, we, get, um, a, we get output that shows us that student's best quiz score. Average, we get the student's average quiz score. And then there's also the possibility that that student isn't found. And if that's the case, then um, we get a message saying um, that that student's data is not found in the file or in the array. So I've set up a few things here. We've got our array of student records. We have our text field, our two buttons, and then our text area, our JText area. And this is new. And then inside our frame, of course we have a quiz stats main that instantiates our frame, but it's inside the frame that all everything is actually happening. We are uh, calling the superclass constructor, setting the default close operation, and then this first statement here is reading from the uh, quiz data.txt file. And what I've done is written a method that's passed a string that represents the file name. So if we look down here below, it essentially does 
um, executes the code that we were looking at in the slide. But one difference here is that instead of throwing I.O. exception like we've done previously when reading from files, in this example we're using something called a try catch. And it's really not that difficult. Basically what it is is when you say try, then in curly braces all of the code that is executed is basically code that you're trying to execute and if it throws an exception rather than just having your method throw it as well you're going to catch it and so that's what this code down here is about so if for example the file didn't exist or we didn't have permission to open it then we would catch that IO exception and print a, me a message to the screen and exit so that's the first thing that we're doing in here is calling the read method. Now what I want to do is set up my GUI. So my GUI consists of our um, text area. So the first thing I'm going to do is instanti instantiate my text area and I called it up above output j text area jta equals new text area. I tell it how many rows and columns I want it to have. And these aren't pixels, these are like lines essentially. And then I, um, I'm going to make it uneditable because I don't want the user to be able to type anything in, in there. That's where I'm displaying the output. And I'm going to add it to this frame essentially using my border layout, which is the default for a frame. And I'm going to put it in the center. And then I'll create a panel for everything else and stick it in the south. Now I'm going to create a, a panel for the bottom that's going to hold all of my other components. I'm going to do something a little bit different here. So I'm going to create all my components and put them in the bottom panel. But because the functionality for my text field and my two buttons is very similar, in all three instances I want to look for a student record and display some information about it. Instead of having three separate listeners like I would ordinarily, I'm going to have a single listener that listens to all three components. And then I'll show you how you can d differentiate between which event um, triggered um, the, the call to the action listener. I'm going to create a quiz listener and right now it's just a little skeleton down below that, that contains action performed. It's not doing anything. So this is a little bit different. Instead of creating it when I add action listener, I'm just going to create it as, as a uh, standalone object. And then I'm going to create my name text field and I'm going to add an action listener to it. But instead of saying new quiz listener there, I'm going to just refer to this listener that I created up above. And that's because I'm only going to have one listener that's listening to all three of these components. I'm going to add this to my bottom panel. And I'll do that with my two buttons as well. Same, same thing. So now I have created um, all three of my components that go in the bottom panel that I'm going to be interacting with. So now I want to add that bottom panel and I'm just going to put it in the south. Okay, and then I've got a couple other lines of code here, pack and set pack, which um, basically sizes the, the frame so that it can hold all of the components and it's just big enough to hold them, as opposed to setting it to a specific size. So I'm going to check and make sure that this compiles and that it looks the way I want it to. So remember I need to compile and execute my main program and oh I forgot to put my J text area there. So let me go back and fix that real quick. J text area. And remember it's not going to do anything yet because I'm not listening to any of my components thing. But it looks the way I want it to, so that's great. So now let's go down here and look at our um, listener code. Now one of the things that I have written here, which is similar to some of the exercises that we did here in class, is um, search method that searches for a name in my student array. And so the search method, I pass it a, a name to find, uh, like Logan Howard, for example. It starts in position zero of my array. It loops over the entire array. 
checking to see if the name of that particular student is equal to the one I'm searching for. And if it is, it returns the position of that student. So if that student's in position 5, it'll return a 5. It's it. If it loops all the way through the array and that never finds a student with that particular name, then it returns a negative 1, which indicates to me that it didn't find the name. So I'm going to use that, that method in my action listener. So down here in my action listener, the first thing I want to do is get the string that the user entered in, in the text field. Regardless of what um, component triggered the event, I want to search for that student and see if they're, if they're in the array. So I'm going to do that by calling my search method and saving that position of that element. So I'm going to say int position equals search name text field dot get text. So I'm not saving that in a separate variable, I'm just getting that string and I'm, I'm calling my search method above and if it finds it I'll get the position of that element in the array of that, of that student record. Um, if it's not found I'll get a negative one. And notice I'm not passing my array like we did in class and that's because my array is an instance variable and so I don't have to pass it in order to access it inside that method. So now I know where my student is or that my student's not in there. So that's the first thing I'm going to check for is to see if it didn't find the student. If it didn't find the student, then it doesn't matter which of my components triggered the event, I just want to report that the student wasn't found. So if that's the case, I'm going to set my J text area. I'm going to call a method called set text. And I'm going to pass it the name. And I'm going to report that that name was not found. So set text just replaces the text that's in the text area with that string that I pass it. So it's going to say, you know, John Smith not found or whatever name I passed it. So now, if the name was found, what I need to know is, did the, did, was the um, action performed method called because I hit enter in the text field or because I pressed one of the buttons and I want to know which button um, triggered the event if that's the case. And so the way we do that is we have this method um, called get source. So notice I have an event that's getting passed to action performed up here and basically that event is, um, I can use that, that event object to figure out what triggered the event. And the way I do that is I say if event.getSource equal equal whatever component I'm, in, I'm, I'm listening for. So I can say if event.getSource equal equal the name text field, that means that the reason the, that the event was uh, triggered because the user typed a name in the text field and hit enter. And if that's the case, then what I want to do is I want to display in the output text area the student's name and all of their quiz scores. And I may not get the spacing quite right, but that's okay. Now, unlike some of our other components, we can use a backslash n in a text area to go down to the next line. And then I'm going to append to that. Now, if I want to add to the text that's already there, I use append. If I want to replace the text that there, that's in the text area, I use set. I'm going to do append. I'm just going to append a long line of dashes. Okay, and then I also want to append the student's information. And I get that. I know the position of that student record from calling the search method up above. And so I append student dot or student sub position, the student at position dot to string. And the two string method just returns their first and last name and all their quiz scores. And so that's essentially what I want to do if the uh, 
the event was triggered by the text field, else if the event was triggered by the best button. And I want to do something slightly different. I want to put in the J text area, put the student's name. I'm going to call the best quiz method. Remember that our student objects, our student record has a best quiz method and so that's what I'm going to call. And then lastly, if the event wasn't triggered by the name text field or the best button, it must have been triggered by the average button. So I'm going to call the quiz average method for that student. And that's it. And lastly, I can request that the text in the name field be selected. And I think I'm missing a curly brace here. Let me fix that. I need to fix this. So let's test this and see if it works the way we expect. doesn't like the quiz average method and that's because it's called quiz av with an e. I'll fix that. Okay, I think that looks like it for some tax error, so let's recompile. And we'll run it. And we'll test it. We know that, for example, we have a student called Logan Howard in our file and now in our array. Logan Howard's best quiz score is 20. Average quiz score, 16.666. Um, if we just type in Logan Howard and hit enter, we get all of Logan Howard's data. Probably want to extend those dashes there, but, but uh, it's giving us the correct output. If we type in a name that we know not is not in the file, and thus not in the array that's been created, hit enter, says John Smith not found. So that's the way you can combine uh, an array of objects, reading from a file, and then creating a GUI front end in order to, to um, access the data that you've read into the array of, of objects. So that's all for this time. See you next time. Bye.